No matter how experienced a designer you are, starting with a blank canvas can be daunting. And building up the structure of common layout patterns from scratch can be time consuming, boring, and redundant, which is why we've created a new AI powered layout generator called Wireframer. Describe what you're trying to build, and Wireframer generates responsive, purpose driven, but neutral layouts that we can then take, modify, and style ourselves to end up with something completely our own. Let's take a look at how it works. Wireframer is meant to be a starting point from a blank page. So from here, I can head to the insert panel and click Wireframer or press W on the keyboard to jump straight here. Now the left sidebar is a chat where we can begin prompting. We can either write a prompt from scratch or start with one of the suggestions, which give us a little preview when we mouse over them. Just to show you real quick what happens on the canvas after your first prompt, I'm going to click on one of these. Framer takes a moment to think and gets to work generating sections on the canvas. We get navigation, headings, placeholders for images, and even some AI generated body copy. And if we open the preview window and resize the viewport, you can see that this entire layout is responsive right out of the box. Back on the canvas, you can see that in addition to using flexible layout properties, breakpoints for tablet and phone were also created automatically. But I've got a separate lesson for you later in the course where we'll dig into breakpoints. So the example prompt worked great, but the whole idea is to generate layouts and content that are tailored to our specific needs, which is really all about writing good prompts. So what makes a good prompt? Let's start with something mediocre. We can be super brief and Wireframer will do its best with what we give it. For example, if we prompt, make me a landing page, Wireframer takes its best guess at what we might need, but it's just a guess. Generic input, generic output. We can bring this prompt up a level by adding something that helps Wireframer write solid, relevant copy for us. Something like, make me a landing page about New Leaf, an app designed to track your progress, motivate your efforts, and celebrate your successes. Now we get headings and even body copy that much better describe our subject matter, rather than having generic placeholders. Another improvement we can make is to specify the sections we want to generate. We can add something like, I want a navigation, feature section, testimonial, and footer. And now we're getting something that actually matches our desired information architecture. The next level up would be getting more specific with the actual layout of each section. Rather than just, I want a navigation, feature section, testimonial, and footer, let's try, I want a navigation with a title in it and five columns in my footer. Create a feature section with a row of three simple cards with a title and an image. I'd like a single centered testimonial too. Now we're getting the sections we asked for, but each with a layout that gives us a starting point that's closer to what I'm looking for without having to go in and do a bunch of manual restructuring. And if we wanted to refine things a little bit further, we could add something like in the header, keep the copy short and punchy and include new leaf. You get the idea. But even though starting with a strong prompt is great, we don't need to write the perfect prompt in one shot. We can get things rolling with our initial prompt and carry on a conversation with Wireframer to iterate on the content it generated. Just keep in mind that this is all about big structural changes. We'll take control over the details directly on the canvas ourselves next. Framer will sometimes give us suggested edits to make that we can just click on, or we can prompt the specific changes we're looking for to either edit existing sections or add new ones. I'll do a couple of edits as an example. Let's prompt add social links to the footer. And you can see that our existing footer has a new layout with some social links. And let's try something even more drastic, like replace the feature section with icons above each feature for more visual appeal. And Wireframer understands where the feature section is and makes the requested changes. And finally, I'll prompt something new by typing add a section with a string of logos after the testimonial. And there we go. Rather than editing an existing section, it added a new one and it's in the right spot. Again, Wireframer is meant to help us, 
not replace us. So everything it generates is meant for us to take over and polish. So once we're happy with the general content structure and rough layout from Framer, we can go back to making edits as we normally would on the canvas. But a couple of things to keep in mind. First is that your chat with Wireframer is cleared when you close the project or quit Framer. So try to get everything hammered out in one session. And second is that the chat isn't aware of any changes you manually make on the canvas. So you really want to get all of your prompting out of the way first and then move on to making edits on the canvas. I'll make a few example edits here, like grabbing this hero area and setting the height to viewport to get 100 VH. That way it fills 100% of the height of the viewport. Then I can make a quick copy change. And then even these feature icons down here are part of a larger vector set that I can browse and swap between. Then it's mostly just a matter of styling things, which we'll talk about in the next chapter of this course. When you're ready to add another page, you can create a new page like you normally would from the Pages panel or Quick Actions menu. Then open Wireframer and start prompting away. Each page gets its own chat. But again, since Wireframer is meant as a starting point, if you do write a prompt from one of your existing pages that doesn't already have a chat in progress, Wireframer will create a new page automatically rather than wiping out the page you're looking at and starting fresh. So one less thing to worry about there. And when you're using Wireframer to prompt on page after page, just know that pages are not aware of one another. Each instance of Wireframer on each page is its own little sandbox. And that's it. Now you know how Wireframer can take your plans for a page and catapult you to a starting point that has the structure you need to build on top of without having to spend a bunch of extra time building up your layouts from scratch. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.